Hi, I'm Sherry Deutschman, founder and CEO of Brain Trust, and this is a jar of pennies. I'm using this jar of pennies today to represent 100% of the 35 million businesses in the U.S. So of these 35 million businesses, what percentage do you believe ever reaches that million dollar mark? Well, I want to show you. I have to remove only a few pennies, seven to be exact, because only about 7% of us ever reach the million dollar mark. And I'm not talking about a million dollars in income to the founder. I'm talking about gross receipts. But what if you're a woman? Well, a lot fewer women make it. In fact, I've got to put back five pennies because less than 2% of women business owners ever make it to a million in revenue. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, well, yeah, but I have a tech company, so um, these stats don't apply to me, you would be wrong. Because actually, only about 1% or less of tech companies make it to a million in revenue. That's an eye opener, isn't it? Well, I made it. In fact, I started a company and made it to a million in revenue by month 18. And then I continued to grow that company to 40 million in revenue. And I, I didn't know all the things that you know right now. I didn't know anything really about private equity or venture capital or strategy or having the right business model, uh, cap tables. I didn't know that stuff. But what I did know was human nature and the need to be appreciated and to be respected. So let me back up a little bit and tell you a little bit about my history so you know how I came to believe what I believe now. So I, I moved to Nashville to sing which is another whole story, but I um, worked for a company that printed and mailed hospital bills. So they were in the healthcare revenue cycle business. I was VP of sales and I would sell one account and we would lose an account. Um, we just hit a really hard space where we couldn't do anything right. And it was very frustrating because I was paid primarily on commission. So it seemed to me like the owners of the company didn't really care about this fluctuation, but it bothered me greatly. And so I set out to determine for myself why we were making so many mistakes. And so I just observed for a few days and I realized that most of our mistakes were just a simple human error. It, I mean, it was carelessness. And the carelessness was caused literally because my coworkers didn't care. And then it hit me that the reason they didn't care is because nobody cared about them and they knew it. So, I mean, armed with that epiphany, I ran to my boss to talk to him about how we could dramatically change our uh, outcomes if we just took better care of our people. And if we could improve morale, we would improve service. Well, this is what he did. He patted me on the hand and said, Sherry, you don't know anything about business. Why don't you just go sell another account? <sighs> he was right. I, I didn't know much about business. I have only a high school education. I was a single mom but I was a good observer of people. And I had just read the book, Nuts. Uh, you've got to read that book. It's the story of how Herb Kelleher, the founder of Southwest Airlines, founded that company with his belief that if he took great care of the pilots and the flight attendants and, and the baggage handlers and, and all the other employees, that they would be happy at work and they would take great care of the passengers and the passengers would then um, be loyal to Southwest and that that would be a, a great winning business model. Well, you know how that's turned out for Southwest Airlines. It's had tremendous success. That really resonated with me. 
So I determined that I was going to start my own company competing with my old boss. And I was going to have as our core strategy, just taking care of the people first. So I ran down to the bank and asked to borrow $350,000 to start that company. And not surprisingly, they said no. But then I went to several people in town who, uh, some customers of my previous boss, people who had seen my ability in sales. And I went to them and asked them for the money and asked them to fund this company. Well, believe it or not, all of them said yes. And yet none of them would allow me to run a company the way I thought the company should be run. And so in a crazy move, since I was, you know, a single mom, no education, had gone from a place where uh, I didn't have enough money to pay the electric bill and daycare. And so my daughter and I sometimes had no electricity. I'd gone from that to making six figures. So to walk out that door and quit that job and try to start a company competing with my former boss was crazy, but then to turn down people who were offering me money to do it was probably even crazier. But um, I, I knew that how I wanted to run the company, and so I cashed in my 401k, and I had a week-long yard sale, sold everything I owned, and I set up shop in my basement right next to the washer and dryer competing with my former boss. And I determined that I was going to take extraordinary care of the employees and make that was going to be our business strategy. And so I went to prospective clients and these were huge healthcare systems. Uh, these are like hospitals, like the Bon Secours systems in the Virginias, uh, uh, Bon Secours system in the Virginias. Yes. And um, New England Medical Center, um, Dignity Health in California, Texas Health Resources in Texas. And I went to these huge healthcare systems and I sat with them and I looked right at them like I'm looking at you right now. And I said, I want your business, but I have to let you know that I don't believe the customer comes first. And while they were still going, wait, what? I started explaining to them um, or really outlining for them all the benefits that our employees had. So that started with paying them a true fair living wage so that they didn't have to do like I had had to do before, which is really worry about whether or not your lights were going to be on when you came home. I uh, told them about how we paid for 100% of our employees, a medical, dental, disability, and life insurance, and how we would let the employees bring their kids and their pets to work anytime they needed to or wanted to, about how if an employee was entrepreneurial and wanted to start their own business, that they didn't need to hide that from me, that they could bring that to me and that I would help them do that and even invest in their businesses. And um, I told them about how we helped every employee buy their first home with a gift toward the down payment of their first home purchase. And then I told them about a profit share program, which was the best business idea I ever had in my life. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a moment. Well, that was a winning strategy, both for sales and for the quality of services we were going to provide because the customers got it uh, immediately. And even though we were the most expensive in the nation, they said, yes, where do I sign? And so we grew enough and fast enough to be on the Inc. 5000 list. Um, that's the list of the fastest growing privately held companies in the nation. We were on that list for 10 straight years and we rarely lost customers because our customers were happy and our customers were happy because the employees were happy and well cared for. And so they were deeply engaged. If you went back and asked any of those employees now, um, I sold that company in 2016. Um, but if you were to go back and ask any of those employees now, which of those benefits that I just outlined to you was the most um, important to them, they would say none of that. They would instead talk about three other things that I'm gonna share with you today. And no matter where your business is, these are three things that I think can make an, uh, an incredible difference 
and profitability and sustainability of your company. So I want to share those three things with you. First was around listening. Just listening to employees. So I did that in multiple ways. Probably the most popular of which was something we called Lunch with Lucy, where on Wednesdays in the company, I wasn't Sherry, the CEO. On Wednesdays, I was just Lucy, a coworker. And employees could choose to sign up for Lunch with Lucy. And then uh, they would choose the restaurant. They would choose whoever else might be at the table with us. And then I just listened to them. And I learned so much about them, about um, the unique problems that they faced every day. Um, I learned probably too much about their personal lives, but I learned what uh, things about things that were going on in the company that I didn't even know about. I learned uh, about decisions that I had made that negatively impacted them and their families. Um, I learned what they thought I should start doing and what they wanted me to stop doing. And I listened. And they knew I listened because I would go back to the office then and make changes based on what I had learned from them. It became the most important time that I spent in growing my business every week. And it is Shameless Self-Promotion, the name of my book, Lunch with Lucy. So number one was listening. Uh, number two was around transparency. You see, we all want our employees to help us uh, grow our companies by making great decisions and doing, um, having all the right actions. But how can we expect them to do that if they don't really understand how the company makes money and their particular role in helping us make money? So towards that end, to let them all understand the big picture, every month I gathered all the employees together in one room, had lunch catered in, and we went over the P&L from the previous month. Yeah, we went over the financials and they saw um, the top line to the penny, exactly how much money we brought in the door, and then the bottom line, exactly how much profit we made. And then we just talked about why the results were the way they were. So if we had a month where, where we did all the right things, that would show in the bottom line. And if we had a month where we screwed up some big jobs, we would talk about that. And we, without finger pointing, we would know exactly where we screwed up and how to make sure we didn't do that again. And so for the first time in their lives, employees could draw a direct connection between their actions and the profitability of our company. And that kept them uh, very engaged. So you might ask why they should care about the profitability of my company. Well, number three is the kicker. Um, so number one, listening. Number two, transparency. Number three, a profit share plan that absolutely changed everything. So um, I know you know lots of lots of companies have profit share plans. And the way they generally work is the profits are distributed quarterly, most usually annually, and they're given as a percentage of your salary. So the people with the corner office naturally get more than everybody else does. Well, not at Letter Logic, my former company. What we did was every month at that meeting where we had just dis discussed the financials, we took 10% of the bottom line that we had discussed and we split it evenly. That means that our CFO got exactly the same thing that our custodian got, who got the same thing the programmers got and the receptionist got we all got exactly the same dollar amount. And that, more than anything, told every person that they mattered and that their role mattered in achieving the results that, of the bottom line. 
And that was the game changer. That's what enabled me to grow that company um, to $40 million without a penny of debt because everybody was so engaged and working together just beautifully. Um, in 2016, I sold that company and have started a new company now called Brain Trust. So it, with Brain Trust, I'm addressing those 2% uh, of women that get to a million in revenue. Actually, I'm addressing all the other women. There are 12,700,000 women owned businesses that, will, that have never reached a million in revenue. And so Brain Trust is a peer to peer organization where those women will gather every month in small groups to help each other, to hold each other accountable to reaching that million dollar goal. Because you gotta get to a million first before you can get to the five million and the 50 million and the billion dollars that is absolutely achievable for some of these businesses. So in closing, um, I wanna share with you a, um, a fable that I think dramatically drives home the points that I'm trying to make with you about employee engagement. Stick with me for this. So a man is going off to Europe for a year and he needs a place to board his horse. So after some research, he has found uh, the three stables closest to him and he goes off to visit them. Well, the first place was just absolutely gorgeous. Um, I mean, just lush grass and, and rolling green hills uh, on both sides of this beautiful driveway. As he approaches the barn, he starts laughing to himself that the, that barn is nicer than his house. And the horses that were in the, in the grass there were just absolutely beautiful. So he had no sooner parked his car than a, a farmhand bounds out to meet him and to shake his hand uh, post COVID, pre COVID, uh, and welcome him to the farm and say, how can I help you? So after some discussion about the whole program, um, the man says, well, what do you charge? And the farmhand says, well, we charge $2,000 a month, but I'll give you a $500 a month credit for the manure that your horse produces. Hmm. The second place wasn't nearly that nice, but it was still okay. There was patches of grass, the, the barn looked okay. Everything was just okay, but the price was way better. There, the price was $1,000 a month with a five, uh, uh, with a $250 credit for the manure. But the third place, totally different story. At the third place, there was no grass. Uh, the horses that were there were scrawny and their coats matted and dirty. The barn was falling down and he had to go looking. Uh, he had to go searching for someone to wait on him. And when he did, he came upon a surly man just sitting in a rocker. So he said, excuse me, sir, can you help me? The man says, yeah, what do you want? He said, well, I, I, uh, I'm looking for a place to board my horse. Yeah, well, you can board your horse here. Well, sir, what does it cost? And the farmhand said, well, it is uh, $500 a month. Oh, wow, $500 a month, that's a lot better. Okay, so what about the manure? The farmhand says, what do, you, what do you mean, what about the manure? Well, your competitors are offering a credit for the manure my horse produces. What are you going to give me? The farmhand scoffs at him. He said, are you serious? Man, if you're only giving me $500 a month to take care of your horse, there won't be any manure. The moral of that story is and I learned this firsthand. If you don't take care of your people, there won't be shit to sell. So whatever business you're creating, think long and hard about your people and how they are your greatest asset and they can help you get to a million and 10 million quicker than almost anything else. Thank you.